Hi, and welcome to prenatal yoga. How are you doing? At the beginning of our prenatal yoga classes, we always like to check in and see how we're doing. How are you doing in your body? How are you doing sharing space with baby? How's your mind? How's your spirit? Let's start with some breathing. Gently rolling your shoulder blades back, pressing into the sit bones, reaching the crown of the head nice and tall. We'll begin a nice circular breath. You can place your hands on your knees or on your tummy. And as you breathe in through your nose, imagine your breath moving up from the core of your body, up your spine. And as you exhale, imagine that breath washing over the front of you, over the front of baby's home. Inhaling as it comes up, exhaling as it comes around the front. Inhale and exhale, nice and smooth. So prenatal yoga is a great way to relax your mind, body, and spirit, to relax baby, and to continue to prepare your body with strength and flexibility for the upcoming adventure of childbirth. So inhaling and exhaling. And as you breathe, I'm gonna read this passage over to you. It comes from Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. You saw me before I was born. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before I even came to be. And so we can take this verse as such an encouragement, knowing that God already knows your precious baby. He has knit him or her together with his own hands. He has breathed life into their little lungs. And he knows the purposes that they have here on earth. Your child is already known and already loved as are you. We're going to shift into another breath work exercise here and it's called bumblebee breathing and you might feel a little bit silly doing it but it creates a really relaxing sensation throughout your body and in your baby's little home. So you'll start by placing your pinky finger and your ring finger under your eye and your pointer finger and your middle finger above your eyes, plug your eyebrows, and then your thumbs are going to plug your ears, but don't plug your ears yet because <laughs> listen to what I'm about to say. So you're going to take a big inhale, and then on the exhale, you're going to make a humming sound. And that vibration is very relaxing. So let's give it a shot. Three big breaths in through your nose, and exhale, plugging your ears. Relaxing your shoulders. Great. And you can pause the video and do that some more if you really just need some relaxation right now. Another breath that we're going to practice is called candle breathing. So you've got five candles out in front of you. This is a great breath for just getting focused, for growing present in your body. And it is a breath that's also used during birth. So you inhale and you exhale blowing out a candle. And then that candle goes away. Then you take a normal breath. And then you blow out the next candle. And maybe your candles are blown out fast and hard, or maybe they're long and smooth. Totally up to you and how you blow out your candles. 
Regular breath in between candles. Last one. Nice. So that's another one. You can do five rounds of candles just to help you grow present, to help you grow relaxed, and to get focused. Let's start with some circles, circling around to the front as you inhale, exhale as you come back around, inhale to the front, arching your back, exhale as you pull on your knees, making your way back around. This is creating a nice, smooth, rocking sensation for baby. Let's reverse the circles which is soothing for them and also great for your spine. You're opening up your hips, opening up your spinal vertebrae, kind of just creating some fluid, some movement in there. Oh, and by the way, if you are feeling uncomfortable just sitting cross-legged, you can use blocks or pillows, which are great props to have nearby during prenatal yoga class. One more circle. Excellent. We're going to take some shoulder circles rolling around backwards and then forwards. We'll switch our feet so that our hips don't get tired on that one side. Now we're going to do a couple of belly pulls. So belly pulls are like hugging your baby without your arms. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of juicy. But imagine using these muscles to hug the baby in. And so you're literally pulling your belly button towards your spine and you're lifting your tummy. This is a great exercise for avoiding pain in your lower back because it's working those transverse abdominals that wrap around the front. Did you know that the uterus only connects in the back? And so that's why so many pregnant women st struggle with lower back pain. Trust me, I know I've been experiencing it. And so these belly pulls are a great way to strengthen the abs in a really healthy and deep way. Also to avoid diastasis recti, which is when the ab muscles actually separate during pregnancy, which two thirds of pregnant women will suffer from. And so let's be part of that one third and do some belly pulls. So inhaling as you bring your belly to your spine, two, three, four, and exhale. Inhale, pulling the belly to the spine, lifting the belly, two, three, four, and exhale. One more time. Inhale, pulling the belly button to the spine, two, three, four, and exhale. And you should be doing those every day. Just focusing on some belly pulls. You don't even need to have your hands on your belly, so you can be doing it while you're sitting at your desk, while you're waiting at a red light, just pulling the belly button towards the spine, consciously breathing, okay? Let's make our way over onto all fours. So we're stacking our shoulders right over our wrists, our hips over our knees, big inhale. Exhale, arching up like an angry Halloween cat. Inhale, is your heart and your hips reach upward and baby reaches down. So belly down, heart up. Exhale, and inhale. And then you can move through these cat-cows at your own pace as you inhale and exhale. This is the number one recommended pregnancy stretch. This relieves pressure in your lower back, in your pelvis, all over all the places where the pressure is building even in your upper back and between your shoulders this is a great one for relieving it we'll come back to a neutral spine and kind of wag our tail stretching our side body And then we'll arch up like an angry Halloween cat and wag our tail up there. Keeping that breath nice and smooth. And we can take some big circles here, trying to keep our hips and our shoulders in place 
and just moving the torso. So you're literally trying to just move your belly around. See, it's hard to do. <laughs> and keep your hips stable. So creating little circles here. Again, rocking baby. And that's why babies, this is one theory, why babies love to be rocked and held so much is because they've spent their whole lives being rocked around the little water balloon home in your tummy. That's comforting to them. All right, we'll inhale as we reach the right hand high and the left leg. Pointing those toes downward. So maybe you take a peek, see if those toes are pointing down. Inhale and exhale. Switching sides, left hand and right foot. Pointing those toes on that right foot down. One more inhale and exhale down. Now while keeping our hips square exactly where they are, we're going to bring the belly button towards the spine and then lift the left hand. Gentle spinal twist. Twisting from the belly button up. Exhale down. Inhale, taking the right hand high. And exhale down. One more time, each side. Inhale, left hand. Exhale down. Inhale, right hand. And exhale down. Beautiful. We'll take our knees nice and wide, tuck our toes. Reach our sit bones down towards our heels and walk our hands out in front of us for puppy dog pose. So puppy dog pose is an excellent modification for the traditional child's pose with the feet flat. So as your belly continues to grow, you have space. Another thing you can do is use a block and sit on it or two blocks and sit on those to create even more space for your growing belly. Reaching the hands long out in front of you. Growing that spine long from the crown of your head down to your sit bones. And on your next exhale, we'll tuck our toes. Move these blocks out of the way. And we'll press up to our downward facing dog. Pedal those feet. Pressing the hips high. Pushing through all 10 of the pads of those little fingers. And we'll inhale, floating the left leg high to the sky. Three-legged dog. Exhale as you open up your hip and take little ankle circles. And then knee circles. And then we'll place that left foot back down. And then we'll reach the right foot up. Exhale as we open up the hip. Little ankle circles. And then knee circles. And then we'll place that foot back down. We'll inhale forward to our plank. We'll take our knees down. Now you don't have to take your knees down, but as you progress in your pregnancy, these external abs that a lot of times are the place where the plank is strong, these external abs kind of cease to be because there's a human living in there. So, taking the knees down does allow you that same shoulder stretch of pressing the hands down, pulling the belly button towards the spine, working the internal core, keeping that butt tucked in, so no butts pushing out, uh, floating up in the air, but tucked in, and we'll take a little push up here. Elbows back, inhale up. We need those strong mom arms, so we won't skip the chaturanga but we will skip the cobra, just because it is a bit complicated as the belly continues to grow. 
One thing you could do if you're taking regular yoga classes, like at a studio or other classes online, is you can use a bolster or pillows to pad you as you move through your vinyasas. So you exhale down, and then you can inhale up to your king cobra using the pillows, if you should so desire. So those pillows will help keep the femurs rooted into the hips and not overstretch those, those round ligaments, not overstretch those abdominals. But for the purposes of our practice, we'll just take that little push up. We'll take the toes, tucked under, press the hips high. Next inhale, left leg up. Exhale, it steps wide. And yes, those steps are gonna get wider and wider as the belly gets bigger and bigger. That back knee can come down. Or maybe you decide you wanna keep it tucked. And then we'll inhale, coming high to crescent lunge. Or if you're keeping that knee down, you can come right here to Holy City. So whichever variation serves your practice best for today, knee down or crescent lunge. Breathing deep, allowing your shoulders to melt down. Smiling, bringing your thoughts back to your meditation. Remembering that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and so is that precious little miracle you're carrying. Exhale, hands come down, and we step back, down dog. Inhale, right leg comes high. Exhale, the right leg steps forward. Maybe the knee comes down and you come up right here to Holy City, or maybe the knee is tucked, or the toes are tucked and the knee is high for Anjane Asana Crescent Lunge. Breathing deep, relaxing the shoulders. And exhale down. Stepping back, down dog. Inhale forward to our plank. Knees come down. Little chaturanga push up here. Taking the toes. Coming right back up. Inhale, right foot comes high. Exhale, that right foot steps forward. Back heel comes in and down. And you open up into warrior two. So our challenge in warrior two is gonna be squaring the hips. So maybe you take your hands to your hips and you square them, but then keep an eye on that front knee. Make sure it stays planted over the ankle. Sitting into it, bending that front knee. The front heel should line up with the arch in the back foot. Flipping your front palm. We'll reverse our warrior. Reaching up, up, up. And then exhale. Rotating forward. Extended side angle. Rolling that left shoulder blade back, taking a peek up under that arm. We'll reach for our blocks. And if you don't have blocks at home, you can use a tissue box or a paper towel roll. <laughs> really, it works. We'll straighten the front knee and reach the left arm up, coming into triangle pose. Taking our gaze up to that left thumb, really pulling the left hip back in space so that it's stacking over the right hip. You should feel a strong stretch in your inner thigh and across your solar plexus. Big inhale and exhale as we close the twist. We'll reach for both of our blocks or Kleenex boxes or whatever you got. You can take that back foot and angle it in a bit more and then fold over the front leg. With each exhale softening a bit more 
And maybe you take your hands to your lower back and see if that lower back is nice and flat. So chances are the left hip is gonna be higher than the right hip. So pull that left hip down and pull the right hip towards the back of the mat. So really squaring those hips. And then melting further over that front leg. If you need your blocks to be a little longer, they're like arm extenders. That's also totally fine to take it on the high side. Inhale and exhale. Taking your hands down to the mat, stepping back, down dog. Next inhale, left leg's gonna come high. Exhale, that left foot's gonna step forward, back heel coming and down, windmill up and open, warrior two. Sitting into it, squaring those hips. You're doing so good. Breathing deep. Open your front palm, reversing your warrior. Big inhale, exhale, extended side angle. Reaching up and back with that shoulder blade, taking a peek under the right arm. Exhale, taking the left hand down to a block. Extending that front knee nice and straight. Reaching the right hand high. Taking the gaze up to the right thumb. And really trying to stack this right hip over the left. come to the top of the mat and you step back down dog inhale forward to your plank exhale as the knees come down little chaturanga and then back up tucking the toes pressing the hips high down dog next inhale left leg's gonna come high Exhale, left knee is going to move towards the left wrist. And the right leg is going to inch its way back. We're moving into half pigeon. So take a peek at that back leg. See if you can get it nice and straight without sickling it in. But nice and straight, coming right out of the hip socket. And then you can lower down onto your block. Or two blocks or even one of your pillows. I'm gonna use a pillow here. And so lower down, find a comfortable spot, and just breathe into these hips. We want our hips to be nice and open as we prepare to make more space for the growing baby and prepare for childbirth. So to intensify this stretch, if you're looking for a little more you can wiggle this left foot further up with the goal of getting your shin parallel with the top edge of your mat. If this is a little much, if it's feeling like way too much on your hips, take a block or a pillow and slide it under that left hip. Okay? We're going to continue to breathe deep. In through your nose, out through your nose. Bringing your thoughts back to our meditation. Back to that beautiful passage. Where you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God, we're so grateful that these babies are intricately woven together by your hand. God, we're so grateful that your works are wonderful. Thank you, Lord. With each exhale, softening and melting a little further down in your stretch. Three more big breaths. And then we're going to 
walk our hands in towards our body, coming up into King Pigeon. And so once the belly is so big that you can't go down, even with the helps of pillows and blocks, you'll just stay in King Pigeon. You won't lower down into Half Pigeon. And we'll tuck the toes. And we'll press that left foot over to the right side of the mat for an IT band stretch. So you're keeping your weight on the right foot and the left foot is just resting on the pinky edge side of the foot. The more you wiggle that left foot up towards the right pinky, the more intense the stretch. The more it slides back to the standing leg, the more relaxed the stretch. This is a great stretch if you've been doing a lot of walking or running. Stretching that IT band from the outside of the heel up to the hip. We'll step back to down dog, pedal the feet, let the hips fall out side to side. In through your nose, out through your nose. Next inhale. The right leg's gonna come high. Exhale as the right knee makes its way towards the right wrist. Remember, you can wiggle that left foot further up and then you'll use, or oh, that's the right foot, <laughs> wiggle the right foot further up, and use the left foot to inch your way back. Straightening out that leg, and then lowering down for your half pigeon. Remembering that you can use your blocks and your pillows to kind of build yourself a little comfortable little tower here, wherever you're at. And if you're in the second or third trimester, especially if this isn't your first child and you're really popping out early, just feel free to stay up in King Cobra if that belly is not leaving you any room to lower down. But I'll go ahead and lower down because I still got a little space. Bring in your thoughts back to our meditation. These babies are fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh my God has beautiful purposes for them. And what a gift that you get to be the vessel of carrying this life. A God breathed a miracle. With each exhale, softening and lengthening. Sending your breath to any tight places. Melting down, lowering just a bit further. walk your hands in towards your chest, tucking the toes in the back leg, lifting the hips, pressing the right foot over the left side. Getting that nice deep IT band stretch in that right leg. Remembering if you wiggle that foot up towards the left pinky, it's going to get more intense. If you slide it back towards the standing leg, it's more relaxed. Next inhale, we'll step that foot back. Paddle those feet. Inhale forward to your plank. Take one more little push up. Last one, make it a good one. Maybe the knees are straight, maybe they're tucked. Hips come high. We'll take our gaze in between our thumbs. We'll take a little frog hop and hop forward. I'll turn to face you. And we're taking yogi squat. Yogi squat is your friend, mama. <laughs> this is your friend. So yogi squat has actually been found to shorten the birth canal for up to 30%. So you are literally allowing space for everything to sink down lower to where it needs to be. 
And a shorter birth canal means a shorter labor time, <laughs> theoretically. And so it's helpful. If yogi squat is too much on your feet right now, you can slide a blanket or a towel or a pillow under your heels. Okay? But it's getting to be warmer where I am in Georgia. I don't know where you are. But warm weather means sandal weather, which means you need your feet to be stretchy and strong. So yogi squat can also be beneficial for your feet. So yogi squat's another one to try to do just whenever you can. If you're sitting around watching TV or wrapping a present or even bending down to pick something up, we're going to do a couple of stand-up squats right now that'll teach you how to do the right, <laughs> the right posture for picking things up. Because that bending over at the waist thing, it's not going to be comfortable as that baby continues to grow. All right, so here's all the benefits of yogi squat. Do it at home. Next inhale, pressing into your feet will come all the way up. And exhale back down to your yogi squat. Oh, yeah. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Prenatal yoga isn't all just stretches and breathing. We also need some strengthening right here in this general area. All the push muscles need to be nice and strong. You can do it one more. And exhale. This time the toes are going to come in to face the front of your mat so that the heel lines up with the second and third toe. Chair pose. <laughs> yep, we're working those thighs. So keep that lower back nice and flat so that the tailbone's reaching down towards the heels. Breathing deep. Taking a peek to see if you can see the toes just past the knees. Sitting a little lower, you can do it. Lifting the heel on one foot and then on the other. One foot and then on the other. You can do this. And then lifting both heels. You got it. Standing all the way up, don't let the heels come down. And then forward fold. We'll take the feet nice and wide, as you will find you'll need to do <laughs> in your forward folds. We'll reach for opposite elbow or forearm and come into a nice gentle ragdoll. Relaxing the neck. And then coming back to our yogi squat. So yeah, there's gonna be some intensity in our prenatal yoga classes, because we need it. We need to keep that heart strong, we need to keep those muscles strong. A good test to see if you're pushing it too far is always the talk test. Can you still talk? Or are you huffing and puffing so hard that you can't speak? If you are huffing and puffing so hard that you can't speak, you need to take it down a notch, because that could mean that you're compromising the amount of oxygen that's getting to baby. But don't worry if you huff and puff a little. I have a puff a little going up the stairs at work. <laughs> that is normal during pregnancy. All right, we're gonna make it onto our bums. <laughs> we'll take those feet towards each other. Making our way into carpenter's pose. We'll take the left hand out to the side, keeping that right sit bone glued down. Come up and over. Inhale. And exhale. And then we'll take our hands so that our toe our fingertips are pointing towards our feet, pointing towards our toes. And we'll lift the hips, lift the heart, reverse tabletop. Pressing the hips high. And exhale down. And come down onto our forearms. 
taking, no, I'll move this out of the way so you can see my feet. <laughs> I've got all these obstacles. So that the big toes are next to each other, flexing the feet, pressing the palms down, opening the heart for a little chest opener. And then lowering down, bringing the left knee into the chest, hugging it out to the left underarm. And then hugging the right knee in. And if it's uncomfortable on your lower back to have that opposite leg extended, keep it bent. And then we'll reach for our big toes, wrapping our peace fingers around our big toes, coming into happy baby. Rocking side to side. Happy baby is another one that is your friend during pregnancy, opening up all the things that need to be open. And then we'll press those feet out. Maybe you keep a hold of the toes, or maybe you reach for the ankles, or you use the hands as little tabletops for the outsides of the knees or thighs, resting the elbows on the floor. Inhale as we close the legs. And we'll exhale as we make our way over onto one side. So we'll start on the left. We'll take the hands out in front of us. You can use a little pillow or a block for your head. We'll inhale as we open the right arm, opening up the chest. Gentle spinal twist. And so as you progress in your pregnancy, moving from one side to the other gets a little more challenging. Kind of like rolling over in bed gets a little more challenging. And so doing the side twist, so starting on your side and opening up from here is a little easier than starting from the center and dropping your knees side to side. And then your next inhale, we'll close the twist. And then all together with our shoulders and our hips, we'll roll. It's that log roll that they talk about that's a lot easier <laughs> than sitting up. And then we'll roll over on to the right side. Those arms are straight out in front of us and then we'll inhale the left arm. Opening up the chest, gentle spinal twist. And it's okay if, if those legs separate a little. Your open twists are gonna continue to feel good as they open up your body, but your closed twists are gonna be a little more limited as you progress in your pregnancy. Next inhale, we'll close. And then together with our arms and our legs, coming back to center, we'll squeeze, bringing the knees into the chest, squeezing the head forward. And then stretch long for our Shavasana. Now your Shavasana, you've got a couple of options here. Of course, you can take the side Shavasana, so if you're just done moving, you can just Create a little fetal position right here where you curl up with your head on the pillow. Maybe you take a pillow in between the knees, which is probably getting more and more comfortable at nighttime as your belly grows. Or for a little chest opening Shavasana, you can take your blocks or whatever you've got and place your pillows over top of the blocks, kind of making a little tower for yourself there. And open up your arms. Because as you progress in your pregnancy, the weight of your uterus pressing on your lower back 
is not only uncomfortable, but also can decrease the blood flow to your own brain and also to baby. And so laying flat is no longer a good option. So using your blocks and pillows to build a little incline can be really nice for your Shavasana. So starting to relax, you stay right where you are. Maybe you close your eyes, come back to that circular breathing. You can always place a pillow under your SI joint, under your hips, if that's more comfortable. Staying right where you are, coming back to that circular breath. Breathing in, up your spine, exhaling across the front. Feeling the space between your eyebrows release and relax. Feeling your jaw relax. When your jaw relaxes, it automatically relaxes the rest of your body. Feeling your tongue melt into the back of your mouth. Feeling your shoulders melt, your heart open up your belly, rise and fall with the natural rhythm of your breath and maybe even your baby's movements. Your hips relax, your hamstrings, and your quads and your thighs are relaxed, your calves are relaxed and your feet are relaxed. And as you rest there in your Shavasana, I'll close our practice with a blessing for you and your baby. Father God, I just thank you so much for this time that we've had. I thank you for these precious little ones that you have knit together with your own hands, God. We thank you that they're fearfully and wonderfully made, that you have already breathed life and purpose into their spirits. God, I just ask that you would continue to guide their growth that you would help them to be strong, whole, and healthy in mind, body, and spirit, Jesus. God, I pray for these mamas, these mommies-to-be, that you would bring peace over their bodies, that you would just be with them, God, that you would continue to help their bodies make space for the baby to stretch and move and continue to accommodate this precious little life. We thank you for this time, and we bless it in your name, and we're so grateful that you've chosen us to carry these lives. What a beautiful gift to be life givers in our communities, in our families, and in this world. We thank you for the privilege. We pray that it glorifies you. In Jesus' name, amen. So you can start to perhaps reluctantly wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, and slowly make your way over onto one side if you're not already on one side. And then walk your hands in towards your body, slowly opening up your eyes as if waking up from a dream. We'll come back to a seated position right where we started. You place your hands on your tummy, imagining your baby's face. Imagining their little hands reaching out to meet yours. Saying, thank you, Mommy, for this time that you made in your crazy busy life <laughs> to do some yoga and help me relax and feel supported. Good job, Mom. We'll take our hands out wide. Taking a big inhale. And exhale to heart center. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me. Namaste. Be sure to subscribe to Missionary Yogi here on YouTube. We've got lots more prenatal yoga videos coming your way. Sending you lots of love. Bye.